Hey guys, welcome! It's Wolf's Den Podcast time! Get it, come here! Get a come quick! You were grabbing a snack, you're gonna be late. Hello, welcome. How you all doing? Will, you, that hat has seen better days. <laughs> I think we all have seen better days than this are day, you, Bob. It's, are it's you been, sad? It's been, a very, it's, it's been a very tough day. What happened? Tell tell us tell us uh, what grieves you. Apple announced they're discontinuing the iPod Touch. Is that the, the only iPod I- brand is now officially dead? Is is that the? I, I just don't know okay. how to handle it. I'm so I'm sorry. I, I a device I haven't used in 15 <laughs> years is affecting me greatly. I I just I just don't know what to say. I I just sometimes I feel you, like sometimes you don't sometimes you don't have to say anything. And just 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 let sometimes you got to let people stew in the wallow that kids these days will never know the joy of going on Kazaa and downloading an entire discography of Limp Bizkit and loading it onto their iTunes and then transferring it via Firewire to their iPod with the click wheel. So what is the iPod Touch the la- the only iPod that they still had? Yeah, I didn't even yeah. know they were making iPods still. To be completely honest, yeah, no, no. So yeah, the the iPod Touch was the last iPod Apple was making, and they they marketed it as like their entry level Apple device. It, it was really for kids mm-hmm. or like people you don't trust with a cell phone. You give that to them, <laughs> and it like you know because it. I think the last one had a fairly recent processor in it it wasn't like completely out of date um but now they decided you know what people use the phones and the streaming and the tiktoks so who needs an ipod anymore let's take it out back and kill it <laughs> they probably were not selling a lot at all no, no have I, you have you seen the walkmans recently uh, I've the MP3 player Walkmans. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those. They're pretty sick so, looking. So I've actually had a conversation with my friends a few weeks back because my friend, a friend, was looking for just an MP3 player, and we discovered that MP3 players, aside from the iPod, exist in two fields: uh, cheap crap for like thirty yes. bucks, and high end luxury items. That costs like hundreds of dollars and are really only for like audio files or, you know, whatnot things, people like that. Dude, people this one's twelve hundred dollars. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's insane. I, I only know I, of this because Kojima like like uh tweets about his like he tweets pictures of his and, and yeah. it's it's pretty gorgeous looking. The, these ones on their website don't look like the one that he has though. Yeah, I mean, you find some really weird MP3 players in this day and age. My a friend of mine actually bought one for four hundred dollars. It not only has two. Uh, yeah, wait, hold on. You broke you your audio completely broke, <laughs> like as if you pulled your mic out a little bit, or or the mic switched or something. You got very low. How about how about now? My now okay? you're good. Now you're good. Okay. All right, so back to making fun of my friend who spent four hundred dollars on an MP3 player in twenty twenty two, and it's got two headphone ports, one normal and one uh, for tube listening because it actually has like <laughs> audio tubes in it. Oh, it's got a preamp. Yes, that's the word preamp. So, so hold on, uh, there's something romantic about having an MP3 player. About, no, there about is. Having I'm not something lie. for music. Yeah, and I kind of wish I had like a dedicated MP. I almost bought an iPod Touch to have a dedicated MP3 player like in my car to just have my entire music library on it. But I also like using, you know, GPS and getting texts to my yeah, uh, you, screen, so. You were talking the other day about how you download you, you were like you were like, "Oh yeah, do this and you can download music." And I was like, "Why yes. would I want to download it?" <laughs> Be- because there's there is, I mean, again, look, I'm old. So I'm still stuck in my ways of like, oh, you got to collect music. But at the same time, there's something to be said for having a a personalized, curated collection of your own. 
I, I understand, you, but you then know? you're not too far off from just owning an MP3 player. True, but every phone is an MP3 player. Also so you true. just select you select the ones you want to listen to on a you select the songs you want to listen to on any particular day, load your phone up, and then you're good to go. Or you you hold you know your select favorites on your phone. This is the uh, one that Kojima has. It looks like it's uh, the three hundred and fifty dollar one. Okay, it's really it looks like an iPod Touch. Yeah, you know what it is uh, in Japan they they use like Android stuff, so like that's why yeah. he doesn't have an iPod. Right. He he doesn't have the twelve hundred dollar one though. Lame. <laughs> Come on, Kojima. What's this one with the that... preamp? I want to see the one with the preamp. Uh, I d- forgot who makes it. It's not Sony. MP3 player with preamp. I, mean, I remember I had a Creative Zen Micro. You did, and it broke almost instantly. It lasted like three months, and then you upgraded to a a Zune. Oh yeah, I feel like I've told this story. We're just procrastinating the 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 BNR podcast. I had I told this story before, but uh, I had I I used to we used to have a Jeep. Uh, I drove it to school and I parked in the parking lot. Uh, and I had the top down and the doors off, and I put my Zune in the cup holder, still attached, you know, to the aux cable and whatever. And I went to class, and I came back, and the Zune was unplugged in my passenger seat. That means somebody went into the car and went, "Oh, free iPod!" Unplugged it, looked at it, and went, "Ew, it's a Zune!" And then threw it back in the car. <laughs> so my friend, my friend has a sci- uh, cyan. Uh, C A Y I N uh, N3 Pro. Fully balanced dual uh, timber portable digital audio player with leather case. Uh, S- Cyan Pro? Uh, C A Y I N N3 Pro, yeah. N3 Pro. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a lot. I mean, I've I, I don't begrudge people for getting MP3 players in 2022. I just question if they need to spend that much money. <laughs> Honestly, though, kind of cool. This is kind of yeah. cool. But but I was looking at the side. Some of them are selling on eBay for like 700 bucks. Like, come on. Yeah, there's a threshold here. Funnily enough, though, uh, four hundred and eighty dollars—that's about the price you could find a click wheel iPod on eBay. Ew. Those things are crazy; like, have crazy resale value. Oh my god, it has a balanced headphone. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of ridiculous. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not buying that. No. Uh, let, let listen. We have a podcast to do. Uh, we, we have do. we have a few things we got. If believe it or not, the topic of this podcast is not MP3 players. No, um, we have a lot to discuss. Uh, Nintendo did a financial reports briefing last night uh, in the middle of the night because it was Japan time, uh, and they showed all of the money that they made, all of the sales they've had, what games are selling good. We now know how much Metroid Dread has sold. We know how many Nintendo Switches are out there on the wild. Uh, and they have a forecast for what's going to happen this year, uh, and they don't expect good things. <laughs> um, uh, and then also, IGN did a report, and uh, people are not happy at Nintendo. Uh, we also have Xbox is streaming uh, is making a streaming only device supposedly. Uh, also, Fortnite's back on iOS through some weird, wacky uh, rebellion. <laughs> thanks, to, thanks to Xbox. Uh, and we got some World Video Game Hall of Fame inductees for this year that uh, we're going to uh, have some words on. And uh, that's pretty much it. We got some other stuff yeah. too. Uh, other but, odds and ends. Yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot going on here today. Yeah. First thing we got to do is talk about MP3 players and then thank all yeah. of these people. Kate McCat, thank you for the 25 months. My sub streak is old enough to rent a car. Oh my God. Oh, uh, damn. Tsukasa with eight months. My favorite part of Tuesday watching the Wolf Den podcast. 
it's my favorite part of Tuesday too, being all the podcast. Yeah. Um, Hector, thank you for the eleven months. Uh, that's so Raven. Thank you for the eight months. Eight months, and I just started watching every Wolf Den video from the beginning. I'm in 2018. Oh my god, dude! Wow, don't do that. Yeah, I don't You're know why I leave videos stuff. up. <laughs> <laughs> just to torture myself. Um, Jeffrey Sorensen, thank you for the 15 months. Hey, Super Wolf Bros, hello. G Para, thank you for the Wahoo. Prime. Spud Potato, thank you for the 500 bits, and then a lot of Japanese that I can only read half of, and I don't have the time to read that half. It will take me I, a long time. I I I know what this about what this is about uh, based on the few English words <laughs> that are in there. It's a Final Fantasy thing, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes it's a final. Yeah. I see. Hey, Bob, Japanese MMORPG. <laughs> 14 uh a realm reborn yep aozia and that's it so yeah it's final fantasy see qui see you queen thank you for the six months is mario real no uh no. mcrib king well i got a guy who delivered a, a a pizza the other day and he looked like mario from the mario movie oh you know, when I went to college, there was a there was a pizza. It wasn't even a pizzeria. It was just some like hole in the wall that was open, like when the bars were letting out, so like four in the morning, and they sold like shitty pizza. And the <laughs> guy looked like, you know, if Mario aged in real time. So, oh my God, that's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, McRib King, thank you for four months. Bob, you're my boy, Blue. Okay. And last Colossi, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate all you people. Now we can talk about uh, what we're real. Oh, also, a little, a little fun aside. Uh, this is a preview of this week's video. It's in the shot right now. This was unintentional. I was just filming over there, and now I'm over here. So I didn't have time to unset everything. But there you go. A little preview. Guess what it is? For the podcast listeners, it's uh, an 8-bit do fight stick, but I did some stuff to it. It doesn't look like one. Oh, we just got 10 gifted subs from Screamy Yelly Gamer. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. That was a very kind of you. That is a lot of subs. Uh, so, first thing we got to talk about is Nintendo Switch sales, guys. Look at this. We got 107 million Nintendo Switch units out in the wild now. Uh, so... Wait, though shortage of parts results in 20% decrease year over year. So 20% less than the previous year, which is it. Well, no, okay. So the previous year was Animal Crossing year. That was pan yeah. big, big, big pandemic Animal Crossing year. So that was, yeah. Uh, I feel like you can't really compete with that. Um. This is according to Nintendo Life. Nintendo has published the latest financial report, giving us a look at the total Switch sales so far. Is looking good with combined with combined might of the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch Lite, and Nintendo Switch OLED model, selling 107.65 million units, inching closer uh, to that 110 million milestone. What would 110 million units put them? Would that put them over PS4? I I would think it would put them at the same at the same level as PS4. Uh, despite this, Nintendo reports that sales of the Switch has increased by twenty percent, has decreased by twenty percent year on year, uh, with the company citing shortages of semiconductor com components and other parts. It also singles out Animal Crossing New Horizons as a particularly high driver of sales during the last fiscal year, something Nintendo has arguably lacked in more recent months. I'm going to say that it's... I mean, Animal Crossing sold a butt ton, but also it's a pandemic, yeah. man. You can't you can't have that lightning in a bottle again. I know. Uh, if Animal Crossing was definitely an anomaly mm -hmm. in a year of anomalies. Um, yeah, And I, sure. I don't think it's fair to expect... I don't think it's fair for any for anyone to expect any company, let alone Nintendo, to have repeat that success. Right. You know? Uh, here's how the console sold over the last year. Total Switch sales this period, 23 million. 
Uh, total standard switch sales this period, 13 million. OLED, 5.8. 5.8. Uh, switch light, 3.7. So standard switch is still the top seller. Yeah. Um, now let's talk, take a look at how uh, where the Switch now stands against Nintendo's other major systems. So you have DS, Game Boy, and then Switch. <laughs> <laughs> the Switch. That's depending crazy. on how you depending on how you look at it. The Switch is well. The Switch is both the Nintendo's best selling home console and their third best selling uh, portable console. If you take out Switch Lite sales, how many Switch Lights? I don't think we have a metric for that. I don't think so. No, because they because the thing is they count the Switch, the Switch Lite, and the Switch OLED as one model. Right. It's so, like they the broke DS, down the sales yeah. per period, but they didn't break down the sales overall. Right. Well, they like the DS, the DS Lite, and the DSi all count as the Nintendo DS. They right, don't break right, right. that down either. Well, I was thinking, take out the Switch Lite because that's only a portable console. Right. Would it still be over the Wii in sales? Uh, oh. Probably not because 107 million versus 101 million. True. Uh, but anyway, so there you go. The Nintendo Switch is third best-selling Nintendo console of all time of all Nintendo consoles. Yeah. And the best-selling home console of Nintendo period. It's a stark reminder of how successful the Switch continues to be and with games like Bayonetta 3, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet all slated for release this year, it's looking like the console will see healthy sales well into the new year, except that they claim no. <laughs> <laughs> Time will tell, of course, whether the system manages to climb up to the Game Boy and the DS. We're pretty confident on the former, at least. Really? Oh, yeah. 118. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Uh, but we reckon the strong software support, including Breath of the Wild 2 in 2023, should nudge it closer to the top two spots. Um, I think selling Game Boy numbers is insane. I, I, I always expected oh. the Switch to... to to at least match the Wii, even though at the time uh, that seemed impossible because the Wii did so good. Yeah, and the um, Wii U did so poorly. The, the, most of the reason why I think uh, the Switch does so good, so so like the Wii did good because like you know it was in like old folks' homes and stuff. Like like yeah. everybody had a like like it was so mainstream that it was so easy for people who weren't even playing games to be have access and be able to play a game. Um, mm -hmm. so it was just super widespread, uh, but the switch, the switch doesn't really have the same, uh, reach, but it's a portable console. So people are buying multi, instead of just having one per family, like you did with the Wii, you have multiple per yeah. family now. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I think made the switch do astronomical numbers. And that's why I thought the yeah. switch would at least match the Wii, but going game boy numbers, I never would have expected. Because the Game so, Boy was such a cultural phenomenon. If you include every video game console from every manufacturer, Sony, Microsoft, Sega, everything, the Switch is the fifth best-selling video game system overall. Uh, the PS4 is ironically the fourth at, <laughs> one, at 116 million units. Then okay. the Game Boy, uh, then the DS, then the PlayStation 2, at 155 million. Yeah, that's going to be hard to uh 116 is going to be Well, the game so the Game Boy is at 118. Yes. So So you're telling me the PS4 just needs to sell 2 million? <laughs> yeah. And what was PS4 number 3? Still in production. Uh number 3 is Game Boy, uh the Game Boy. Game Boy Game Boy Color. Oh, number 3 is Game Boy. Okay. Uh so yeah, I guess the Switch. This, the, the, I think. Yeah, the Switch will definitely sell a couple. It just needs to sell like a, a, a yeah, cheesy, it, well, cheeky ten million this year, and then it's good. Yeah, which I think is possible, but at the same time, I feel like we're hitting the, the point in the Switch's life cycle where everyone who would want it has it already. That and like is the, the people, kind of the, the people who are. 
the people who like get it after the fact are like outliers and stuff. That is kind of where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, another article here says Nintendo forecasts profits and sales to drop this fiscal year. Uh, mm-hmm. Still expect Switch to once again pass 20 million hardware sales, though. Uh, after the dizzying highs of the 2020 to and 2021 financial year, the most recent financial results from Nintendo show an expected but relatively modest drop following the pandemic and lockdown-related boom. The results are still very strong, yet we're now into the sixth year of the Switch generation. Oh, God, we're so old. Uh, so old. As such, Nintendo is forecasting an upcoming year of declines to match the older hardware. First, let's summarize the key figures. Uh, okay. The, Nintendo themselves made a net sales of approximately 13 billion US dollars, uh, which is m- uh, uh, less than 3.6%. So they made, they're down 3.6%. Um, operating profit, 4.56 billion, which is down 7.5%. And net profit, $3.67 billion. Uh, they're down 0.6%. Uh, Switch hardware sales is down by 20%. Uh, Switch software sales is up 1.8%. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo has cited the global chip shortage as a factor in the reduced hardware sales. The company had to uh, reduce previous projections earlier in the financial year due to the issue. Software sales actually being up does show the continued demand for the system and its games in a particularly positive light. I'd argue, this is Bob talking, I'd argue that uh, uh, Will's right and the increase in software sales shows that everybody who wants to switch has one. (laughs) Yes, yes. And, you know, we're getting new games and people want to try the new games and maybe people want to try games that they didn't try yet. You know, on the Switch. Uh, as we mentioned, though, Nintendo is forecasting 2022 and 23 to be a down year across the board. Below are its estimates across the same areas with the percentage showing the expected declines coming to the most recent results. Uh, they're going to be down 5.6% net sales, down 15.6% in operating profit, and down 28.8% net profit. That's a lot. <laughs> Uh, Switch hardware sales, they're projecting to get 21 million, which is down 8.9%. And the software sales, they're projecting to be down 10.7%, which is kind of a lot. Which That's a lot considering all of the big games coming this year. Yeah. Uh, while profits in the billions and while profits in the billions and over 20 million seems sold system sold will be considered a positive on many metrics. The momentum is undeniable. There's little doubt that investors will be eager to know how the company plans to level out and start increasing sales and profits. Once again, yes, that'll lead to chatter about new generation hardware as the switch slows down, which Nintendo life has an article about right on the friggin' front page of their website. Uh, as switch software sales slow, how, how long can you delay the switch to, (laughs) which we looked at and said, that's a great title. Yeah. Uh, the software sales is also an interesting number showing that Nintendo doesn't expect this lineup for the coming year to hit the same heights. This is perhaps understandable with two Pokemon releases, Scarlet and Violet, instead of three. <laughs> <laughs> and with Breath of the Wild 2 being delayed to enter just before... to uh, being delayed, Breath of the Wild 2 being delayed just either... I'm having, I'm, I'm stroking. You're out. right. You're okay. Breath of the Wild know, 2's the- gonna friggin' be delayed till just before the end of the fiscal year, or potentially falling later in spring. Uh, yeah. I don't think they would. I think they'd push it to just before the fiscal year. Didn't they do that with the Switch? The Switch was like right before the fiscal year ended, wasn't it? Yeah, the Switch was like in like the middle of March or something. <laughs> it was March third. Yeah. Uh. We'd suggest these forecasts perhaps make a huge selling upgrades system and Breath of the Wild 2 long shots for before 30, uh, the 31st of March 2023. But it, it's Nintendo, so who knows? Um, so basically the moral of the story is um, 
<laughs> most people who want to switch have it already through some means. There's so many different ones that they've made available. Like it's, uh, the the Switch yeah. Lite is the easiest one to get in people's hands. Um, yeah. But there is a chip shortage. So then there's they're arguing that some people who wanted a Switch couldn't get them. Yeah. Um. But I, 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 the biggest, the weirdest thing about all this is that there are so many great games coming out this year. So projecting that they're going to be down 10.7% in software sales this year is crazy. I also yeah. think it's crazy that a company would say all this. <laughs> like an American well, company would try to pretend like everything's fine. Well, I think, I mean, Nintendo operates very differently from American companies. Right. And I think that they've seen the monumental success of the Switch uh, year over year that they can afford to say for one year that they're not going to sell as much as they did last year. At the same time, this could be a business strategy where they lowball everything based on, you know, you know, a logical conclusion that, you know, there's no way they're going to hit the same numbers as they did last year. So they lowball it so that when they do exceed those expectations, it makes them look better all around, you know? That's true, too. Uh, I think it's great that they set uh, the expectations for their uh, uh, shareholders and, yeah. and, and have good reasons. Like, look, it's down now, but next yeah. year is going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, all the people who, like, held out when the Wii U was going on, they were like, look, we made a mistake. We were trying. We tried to do something wacky and wild. Yeah. But the next thing, you guys, guys aren't going to believe what we got coming out. <laughs> yeah. And then they went for it. Uh, I found the PDF. I just put it in, in our little document. Uh, this is the PDF of their financial reports. Uh, these are the games that were the best sellers for them. Uh, is Am I to believe that's the top of the list? Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is the best selling Switch game of the past year. Really? 14.65 million units. I guess. And then Arceus is 12.64 million. And then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 9.94 <laughs> million. Now that's a game I would imagine anybody who, you know, wanted it has it already. They keep finding people to, to give it to. I guess. I guess it's one of those games where, like, you don't think you need it because your friend has it, so you just play it at, their, at your friend's house. But right. maybe you want to play it at home to practice. I think I've come to the conclusion that I am getting worse at Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I suck at Mario Kart. I've never been good yeah. at Mario Kart, and I hate playing that game. Uh, They also have a slide here. Previously announced titles for 2022, and I know that... uh. Zelda is 2023, but I still thought it would be included if it would be in the fiscal year, you know? Right. Well, maybe maybe they'll push it to the start of the next fiscal year. Yeah, I think that start would be next, weird. Next fiscal year off of the bang. That's weird. Uh, There was a better breakdown that I was trying to find of actual uh game sales. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, Metroid Dread is now the best-selling Metroid game of all time. Uh, it's sold yeah. just over two million, uh, which Wait, is very good. That's it, just two million. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little sad, but uh, that I is mean, that no, still no, makes like, it the best-selling Metroid game of all honestly, time. And honestly, that put that puts things in perspective because you hear things like. Uh, you know, people love Metroid. Metroid's a fan favorite. Why doesn't Nintendo put out another Metroid? Uh, when the best-selling Metroid game is only 2 million units and the best-selling Mario and Zelda games are like north of 10, mm -hmm. you know, it it kind of it kind of starts to make sense. Bobo says 2.9 million. I thought it was Oh, it is 2.9 million. Oh my god, that's crazy. Okay. So three million, basically. Well, no. So like, Spawncast has this whole thing where RGT was like, "It's not gonna sell three million. There's no way it's gonna sell three million. And they had like a whole bet about it, and he won oh. the bet. <laughs> <laughs> he won the bet. He was he was point <laughs> one away from losing the bet. Anyway, uh, 
Wait, what is this? What is it's new Super Mario Brothers? You deluxe thirteen point thirty one million. Get out of my face right now. What are you? What are you talking about? I mean, that makes sense because, uh, you know, that's a that's a two D side scrolling Mario game. People love those. But so it's number one. one. <laughs> it's number one for the whole year. I do, I don't know what this list is. It just says updated sales list. Here's a link. Oh, here's what? a link. All right, here it is. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still the top selling Switch game. Fifty. I'll put this in the in the keep so you have it because I know you're so confused. Okay. <laughs> I am. I was also looking up something for the next start next news. Uh, all right. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the number one best-selling Switch game, uh, with 45 million units. It's probably the okay. number one Wii U game, also. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. Number two is Animal Crossing: New Horizons, which is kind of crazy. I'm interested to know yeah. if all of those sales were from the pandemic, or you know, like from launch, think, basically. Uh, most of it probably is. You know, because uh, that, that when that game came out, it exploded. It fucking exploded. Uh, we also have Super Mario Brothers. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. 28.17 million. I'm a little surprised Smash Brothers is number three. Um, I knew it would be do well, but it is uh, yeah. like a fighting game. Uh, but it's, th- you know, a party fighting game. Yeah, it's an accessible fighting game. Uh, yeah. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is 26.55 million. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, twenty four point twenty seven million. That's kind of really sad because that game was not great, and <laughs> and it's and it's the fifth best selling game on the Switch. Yeah, what's also really sad, Mario Odyssey is number six at twenty three point five million. Wow. Uh, yeah. So it's like I hope they uh really want to make a new Mario game. <laughs> Uh, Mario Party, Super Mario Party, 17.78 million. Uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, 14.65 million. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, 14.53 million. Ring Fit Adventure, number 10, 14 million. Uh, Ring Fit Adventure is the one you don't really hear much about anymore, but people are still buying it up like crazy. Yeah. I'm I'm surprised that Nintendo was able to make fitness a popular game again. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, that's this is just first party games, right? Yes, Razzle Jazzle. This is yeah. just Nintendo first party stuff. I'd be interested to see if there's any third party stuff in this. Like, what third party game would have sold more than 14 million copies on the Switch? Aside from like a yeah. free download, like Fortnite. Like Fortnite, I could imagine would be downloaded a lot. Right. Um. Third probably probably wouldn't come close to Nintendo in the top ten. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, uh, I feel like the top ten is pretty untouchable. I mean, yeah. even, when you're looking at all consoles, all game sales across all consoles, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is in the top ten every single month. So. Yeah, it's like you know how Grand Theft Auto Five is always in the top ten every month. Minecraft, okay, Minecraft might be in the top. Hades, I don't think Hades has been in the top anymore. <laughs> I don't think 80s is going to be anywhere near the top 10 anymore. So that's it. Nintendo sold a lot of stuff. Uh, They're going to... The Switch is still going to be one of the best-selling consoles of all time. Uh, But this year, it's slowing down a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Which probably means next year... Uh, it's gonna be a little hardware. It's gonna be a very big announcement. Very big announcement. It's gonna be a little hardware. Or maybe the year after, but still. Probably, yeah. Maybe they'll hype it next year for the following year. Like they did with the Switch, yeah. Yes. True. Josh Torres says there are more Ring Fits, Ring Fit rings in existence now than there are Wii U's. <laughs> that is said. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's talk more news. But first, thanks, Fern Gods, for the Prime subscription. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about IGN's reports on Nintendo. 
Yes. Uh, so I'm not going to read that report specifically because it's it's long and we'll be yeah, here all day. So I put I a, see that. I put uh, Go Nintendo had a basically a summary of it. So I will be reading their summary. The last couple of weeks for Nintendo God. have not been good when it comes to public perception. It all started with an unnamed Nintendo employee who claims their rights to unionize were violated. That was followed by Nintendo of America contractors who alleged, alleged mistreatment as well. Uh, those reports have been followed up by IGN with a new piece that speaks to more current and former contractors who have taken issue with how Nintendo of America operates. In the piece, one former contractor describes the culture in the NOA department as stilted and oddly formal. This included staffers making regular apologies for leaving 15 minutes early, among other things. This apologetic so nature annoying. was something full-time Nintendo employees participated in as well. Furthermore, contractors supposedly had to account for virtually every minute of their day on a timesheet, which caused all sorts of employee paranoia about getting in trouble for stepping away. Not surprisingly, employees uh, employees are also worried about posting on social media as they fear they'll get fired for sharing any number of opinions or comments. Apparently, even things like taking sick days led to multiple apologies, all over fear of being severely reprimanded by higher ups. As we said, people are speaking out in the last few months, which goes against how quiet things have been for years. One longtime contract. One longtime contractor states that the mood is really tense in the offices as everyone is wondering what Nintendo is going to do in reaction to these stories being shared. It's clear that the deluge of comments isn't going to stop as IGN spoke to dozens of current and former full-time employees and contractors, all of which say Nintendo has become more heavy-handed and restrictive in recent years. After concern for contractors and Another concern for contractors is the lack of upward movement. One contractor says that years ago you could expect to move up to you can move up the corporate ladder so to speak. You could start on the lower uh, rung and work your way up. Nowadays, one former contractor says it seems like there is no path forward within the company as you'll likely take on more work than you should, but there is little hope for promotion along the way. This is backed by a source that says while Nintendo demand uh, Nintendo's demand for localization writers and editors has doubled in the last three years, that area of the company has had no full-time hires in the same period of time. Obviously, this has led to quite a bit of quite a big amount of turnover for contractors. Another source spoke on the matter uh, by sharing the following. Uh, it's just like throwing bodies at things. It seems like the full-time staff uh, was almost drowning all the time. They didn't hire enough full-time people, so full-time people just ended up managing more and more contractors, getting more and more bogged down, and there was a bottleneck. That's how contractors ended up training each other because the full-time staff was just buried. Uh, Nintendo released a statement on the original right to unionize complaint a few days after it was filed, but they're, they've yet to comment on the allegations shared thereafter. Uh, one person who was willing to comment on the matter was Reggie fils who shared the following. <laughs> Hell yeah. At this, at this point, I am three years retired from Nintendo of America, and I can't comment on what's going on today within the company. What I can say is that while I was there, we routinely hired contract employees uh, in as permanent employees. We did it repeatedly. And interestingly, if you look at the... If you look at a number of well-known personalities within Nintendo of America, a lot of them started as contract employees 10, 15, or 20 years ago. So it's always been a positive part of the culture to recruit in the very best of contract employees into the company. So I've read the same stories, this division between contract and full-time employees. All I can say uh, is that this is not at all the culture that I left as I retired from Nintendo. There is much more to yourself. read. <laughs> yeah, there is much more to read through in the IGN feature with more personal accounts about Nintendo's approach to contractors, how they handle full-time employees and contract employees commingling, and uh, plenty of other topics. Make sure to read the full feature. And Reggie shared a similar comment with uh, the Washington Post. Uh, Myra in the chat says, wait, is this Nintendo's offices in Japan or in the U.S.? Because this, in isn't, the US. this isn't that unusual for U.S. workers rights sadly i saw yeah, this no, get shared it. around 
and people were saying this isn't a Nintendo thing. This is a games industry thing. It is a games industry thing. I but I think it's important to highlight when it comes from a company as well liked as Nintendo. Right. Because, you know, company like Activision, yeah, people may like their games, but they don't like the company of Activision. Right. So to hear that there's a lot of bad stuff happening, you're not really surprised. It's it's shocking when you hear that a company as well liked and as secretive as Nintendo is having all these um has a toxic work environment towards right. its employees and specifically its contracted employees. There's one story in the IGN article um, that was shared that wasn't in the Go Nintendo article. Uh, an employee took time off to go to their sister's funeral, and then when they came back, they were reprimanded for it. Right. It's things so, like somebody that. Somebody said that in the chat. Yeah. Uh, John got the juices. Thanks, Will. People saying it's game industry thing, just trying to control damage for Nintendo. That's not an excuse. Yeah, even if... I, <laughs> saying even it's if a it games is, industry thing is not an excuse at all. No, that's... It's much that's worse. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's just as bad, if not worse, because it that's normalizing that's normalizing bad work environments you know I, I never for a second thought that nintendo would be a fun place to work at nintendo seems right. like hell it's one of those corporate <laughs> like you know like just, you're just a cog in the wheel but the problem with i mean nintendo is a very japanese company so having like that sort of like oversight and 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 that sort of uh work culture uh even if it's in the u.s it's gonna be weird and it's there's gonna be a lot of yeah. like strict rules and stuff like having your, every minute of your time sheet accounted for like it's not gonna be good and and what people were saying about the games industry was uh contract workers are just treated like second class citizens at these companies sometimes so, yeah uh and, and yeah you might get hired off of being a a, a uh, a contract employee, just like you can get hired by being an intern. It's a great way yeah. to get your foot in the door, but it doesn't mean that there, a lot of them aren't being treated like second class citizens. What? Because yeah. you get hired, you're allowed to be treated like a second class citizen. Like that. That's yeah, not it, an excuse. It's one of the. It's one of those situations where like, the Nintendo almost treats it as like it's a privilege to work for us, and if yeah. you don't like it, we can replace you with like, a line of people waiting to join down the block. You know, they, yeah. they know they hold all the power. Yeah, because uh, I mean, it, 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 everybody loves Nintendo and it seems like a cool yeah. thing to be able to work on your favorite games and with your favorite games and stuff. But uh, it seems like you get like no freedom at, at a job like that. Spe this yeah. is specifically talking about contract employees. Maybe there's no more freedom and leeway for like full time employees. But I yeah. doubt it. I I think that I mean I think that contract employees are getting the brunt of it. But I think that it's just it, you know it's going to be one of those nine to five gray walls. You know, yeah. uh, uh, not seeing the sun for a while. It just doesn't <laughs> seem like a fun like a fun thing. Yeah. Um, and you know, and like I said, like Nintendo is a well liked company, and I know like especially for people our age. You know, the idea of working for Nintendo is like a dream, you know, like, oh, yeah. cool, go work for go work for Mr. Mario or whatnot. And just to have the reality shattered like this, it, it is kind of heartbreaking in a way, even if it it is like, you know, sadly to be expected from a video game developer. Soul Objective says they closed down the California office and wanted others to relocate. The Nintendo Minute Duo didn't want to do the relocation, which is one of the reasons they left. Yeah. Honestly, I never knew they had a California office. I didn't know that's where Kit and Krista <laughs> were located or anything. I thought yeah. that they were in Seattle. Yeah. Or that's where they are, right? That's where Nintendo is, Seattle? Uh, Redmond, which is oh, outside Redmond, of Seattle. Washington. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, that's sort of corporate stuff happens all the time where, where companies relocate and then people just have to move or don't, you know? And, and yeah. it, it, sometimes it changes the lives of families and yeah. sometimes they just go, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Um, they are next to Microsoft. Oh God. That's kind of oh. crazy. Yeah. Maybe they well, could just walk over and work out a deal. 
Yeah, maybe that's why we're getting so many Microsoft games on yeah. Twitch. <laughs> hey, you want to come over? You want to play yeah. some Halo? Bill Spencer, Bill Spencer just walked over. He's like, hey, you want this? <laughs> you want Ori? You want Ori in the Blind Forest? Pokemon Company International is Bellevue. Oh, oh. interesting. I mean, they're all like uh, in Japan. <laughs> these yeah. are these are just the American offices. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. I again, I never thought Nintendo was gonna be a happy, fun place to work at. But I mean, <laughs> it feels bad. It feels terrible to say, but at least they're not getting the same sort of uh, uh, controversies that all of these other game companies are getting. True. True. I mean, they they should they should be better, but no, they still should be better. The, the working yeah. environment should be better across the board for everybody. Yeah, but I mean, it could be worse than getting yelled at for going to a funeral. <laughs> yeah, you could be working at Activision. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? We have Microsoft News, which was almost going to be the main topic of of today, because this is kind of a big deal. Yes, uh, Xbox is allegedly working on a streaming only system, uh, and it's reportedly coming soon. Whoa! And also an app for Samsung TVs. Wow! Well, that's wow. kind of cool. Yeah, I didn't think about that smart TV situation. Uh, Smart TVs always Microsoft. are always weird. Like I haven't smart met a, TVs. I haven't met a smart TV with a UI that isn't slow as hell. Smart TVs suck. I hate <laughs> smart TVs, and I hate the fact that all TVs are smart TVs now. It is so hard to find a dumb TV. They all have to have like apps and shit. Mostly because that's how they subsidize the prices of their TVs. Like. That takes out a substantial cut of the final retail price. So we save money. But at the same time, oh my God, it's just uh, fucking let me just put a Roku stick in there. Let me handle it that way. Yeah, you should God. be able to disable it. That would be great. Because like, no. you know, like with our parents, like there's all of these menu options. Now you can't just change over to the Apple TV, you know? I know. So my LG TV in my living room is a smart TV. And... The smart TV features were disabled. They were disabled because that particular TV has a flaw where the Wi-Fi antenna kinks. <laughs> and it just cuts out all Wi-Fi service. And when the TV loses any internet connection, it just doesn't... Uh, the smart features just don't work. Oh, my God. So you can disable I it. Can, I can fix it by opening up the TV and straightening the Wi-Fi cable. Are you kidding? But me? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's absolutely insane. Yeah. Anyway, Microsoft is, is done waiting for you to come to Xbox. Instead, the company is gearing up to bring Xbox to wherever you are. This is part of the company's Xbox Everywhere initiative, which is expanded yesterday by adding Fortnite to Xbox Cloud Gaming. More on that later. <laughs> While you can already stream games from the cloud to your phone or PC, Microsoft uh, also has plans to expand access through uh, your family television, according to people familiar with the plan. Next 12 months, Microsoft plans to release an Xbox Cloud Gaming streaming device. This will likely look like an Amazon Fire Stick or a small Roku-like puck. And like a Roku, the Xbox streaming device will enable you to access movie and TV services in addition to a library of games through Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. If you already have a Samsung Smart TV, though, you can maybe skip a separate device entirely. Microsoft is working closely with its partners at Samsung to develop an Xbox game streaming app for the company's televisions. That, too, should debut within the next 12 months. Uh, this move from Microsoft is hardly surprising. The company has noted repeatedly that it doesn't really care how you get into the Xbox ecosystem, but while it has said that it has also simultaneously poured a huge amount of resources into dedicated Xbox consoles. This has been something of a concession that gaming hardware is still the best way to reach potential Game Pass subscribers. 
But with games like Fortnite and Halo Infinite, Microsoft could appeal to an audience that is ready to try free games but not willing to make an investment in expensive consoles. I, I They said that console hardware is the best way to reach potential Game Pass subscribers. I think that's I think it's the best way to reach them. It's their current way to reach them. I don't mm. think it's the best way to reach them. I think the best way to reach them is on uh on the computer, on your phone, on, on whatever devices they might already have, maybe even a smart TV. I, well, I, think, I think that think- those are the best. I think that they're I think that this is a really good idea what they're, what they're trying to do here. Yes. I think cuz right now the mindset is if you want to play games on a TV, you need a console so right. having actual consoles is microsoft's first step showing the world that we have these brand new consoles um they work just like the old consoles but you can also stream games to them over the cloud once right. they introduce that then they introduce step two gaming on phones over cloud step three doing it on pc now step four doing it on your television without the console it would be really cool, like your parents just got a new TV, and you're like, "Oh snap, I got a new TV." Yeah. Let's see what this TV can do, and you see like the Xbox logo, like, yeah. on the TV, and you're like, "Whoa, yeah. wait a second. And you click on it, and it's like, "Try it now for a week." You have yeah. all of these games, and you're like, "Okay." That would, yeah. That, and then you freaking that... plug in your your Pro controller or whatever, and you just freaking start playing Halo for a week, and you're like, "Holy shit! I didn't know I could do this." Yeah. It's, it's a game changer for sure. It, it, it's kind of funny because this is what Stadia was pitched as. Yes. Well, it's back yes. That launched. Yes. And Microsoft is actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, they're doing you a know, much better a- job. Yeah, they're actually developing apps for the television and a dedicated streaming stick for gaming. Uh, and if this is successful, we maybe will see this on Apple TV or Amazon Fire TV, or any of the other streaming sticks that are out there. You know, you don't have to get the Microsoft one. You can just get it on whatever system you have. Right now, the mindset is, if I want to play Game Pass games, I need a $300 or potentially $500 device, which is a big yes. barrier to entry. But if you yes. can get like a $60 stick, <laughs> like that's yeah. pretty crazy. Especially um, like if it's Xbox branded, because then people will see, yeah. oh, if I want to play Game Pass, I need the Xbox branded one. And yeah. then like, you know, down the road, you can start trickling in uh, the Xbox app on Apple TV and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, somebody in the chat before uh, said that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the TV, smart TVs usually have terrible Wi-Fi cards, which is true. Yeah. yeah. Kyle Belmont yeah. said that. Uh, which is a big concern. Also, yeah, they're always slow. Uh, yeah. and, and and I would be concerned with their ability to actually play games. I don't have yeah. a concern with like a with a stick, like a like a dedicated stick. If it's anything like a Chromecast, it'll stream games just fine and have and, and there won't be any noticeable delay at all. Um, right, but. I don't have a lot of faith in most smart TVs. Uh, there's yeah. some manufacturers that I'm sure will be able to do fine, but uh, I mean, I guess having the option is nice either way. I'm curious mm-hmm. what type of controllers you'll be able to plug in because uh, I'm just assuming not everybody's going to have an Xbox controller laying around, and that's another yeah, barrier I'd, to entry. I'd imagine uh, it would have to be a TV that supports some kind of Bluetooth, so you can mm-hmm. connect a Bluetooth controller to to it yeah most of them have usb ports already true but yeah i i hope that it works with with basically any controller i hope you don't need an xbox controller because then at that point they're probably gonna have a dongle with a controller bundled in then you might as well just get that yeah yeah uh can you stream from your xbox in one room into a puck in the other room uh yeah, probably. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know why you'd want to. Yeah. But I mean theoretically, yeah. Yeah, I mean you could do that now with your phone. You could just remote into yeah. your uh to your console with your phone. And it works really well. Yeah. Um 
What about the streaming app? What about it? Isn't that what we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, because if like if the streaming app on the Samsung TV, um, that Samsung TV better have a way to connect to a controller. If you have a stick, that that would be automatic. But if you don't have a stick, if it's on the TV, I hope the TV supports Bluetooth or something. Yeah, it would need, it or would maybe absolutely need to. Microsoft still sells that dongle for PCs that mm-hmm. you can connect uh, an Xbox controller to. The, if you don't the, have Bluetooth, the idea is you want to buy as little stuff as possible. You right. Know? No, obviously. Um, speaking of streaming with Xbox, they're making a lot of moves here with yes. uh, 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 with the, with their Game Pass situation and getting games streaming and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, yes. the biggest game in the world. Thanks to Microsoft, you can play Fortnite on the iPhone again for free. Uh, after years of being without one of the world's most popular games, gamers on iOS and iPad OS can finally play Fortnite once again. Thanks to Microsoft and Epic Games bringing Fortnite to Xbox Cloud Gaming and allowing everyone to play it without the need for an X oh without the need for an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription. Oh, excuse me. God bless you. As part of Microsoft's mission to bring the joy and community of gaming's to players everywhere they are, Fortnite can now be played on any iOS, iPad OS, Android phone, or tablet, uh, or Windows PC with internet access through a web browser. This is without any need to download or install anything as long as you have a Microsoft account, which is an incredibly low bar uh, to ent- uh, low bar to entry. Uh, while this all sounds well and good, Xbox Cloud Gaming Service is still technically in beta, so it's only available in 26 countries at the moment. You'll also require a fast internet connection if you want to seamlessly if you want seamless gameplay without any hitches or too much compression in Fortnite's graphics. Uh, thankfully, for mobile gaming fans who aren't too keen on Fortnite, Xbox Wire post announcing Fortnite's glorious return to iOS. Uh, Microsoft noted that they are planning to bring more free-to-play games to Xbox Cloud Gaming Service in the future. However, uh, there's currently no indication of just which other free-to-play games will be available at this time. Uh, What do they have to gain from that? From having a free-to-play game through Game Pass? Are they going to take a cut? Microsoft? Yeah, they're going to take a cut of in-game revenue? Isn't that what Fortnite's against? Yeah. Like, what's how, uh, how are they doing that? I mean, the one thing they do have to gain is good publicity. Mm-hmm. If, if, like, they're coming out and saying, like, hey, you can now play Fortnite again on iOS and Android thanks to us, you know, that that's a good look for them. And it opens the door for other free-to-play games to now come uh, go streaming on uh, iOS and Android that weren't technically iOS or Android games before, you know. Imagine Warzone, like this. I would, I would love that. Yeah, yeah but they were purchased by Microsoft, so right. That's gonna well, the deal didn't eventually. go through yet, so the deal wasn't approved yet. So I, so this this whole article is talking about Xbox Cloud Gaming through the web browser, or is it through the app? Because there wasn't an browser. issue. Yeah, there's an issue no. with the there's an issue with the app on on iOS, right? They won't there is approve there it. is no app on iOS. There's a Game Pass app. I just downloaded it. I'm trying to see what's up. <laughs> well, can you play games on it or or is I, it just for like cataloging? I'm finding that out right now cuz I I okay. I assume it's just for cataloging because there was that whole there was that whole thing about uh, yeah. how uh, my uh, Apple wouldn't approve them for whatever reason. Yeah, Apple wouldn't approve them because they wanted every single game to be uh, rated and available in the App Store. And and now Microsoft kind of blew any chance of them ever being approved because they they just put Fortnite on there. <laughs> yeah. They, they they were kind of like you know what screw it we're already screwed anyway let's just uh yeah let's liberate Fortnite yeah uh okay so I'm in I'm in the app now uh 
Is Need for Speed Heat a game that I yeah. can play? How come, like, the, Halo should be, like, right at the top. It's, like, the only game I <laughs> ever play on Game Pass. No, they, they uh, put all Forza EA Horizon. games at the top. Forza, no, Forza also. Forza Horizon 4? Why would I want to play 4? <laughs> because, you, because you played Call of Duty, Forza Horizon 4, Minecraft, NBA 2K22, Skate 3, Need for Speed Heat, Gang Beasts. Get out of here. You don't know anything about me. Wow. I'm going to play Steep. There you go. It's leaving Game Pass soon. Oh, install, better hurry. Install 2. That's the only option. Yeah. You can install to a console you want. So this, this app is basically useless. Yeah. So just like on a Steam Deck, you got to go to a web browser and you got to log in <laughs> that way and that's how you'll be able to play your Game yeah. Pass games. Uh, well, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm still glad that, uh, I'm glad I'm happy that Microsoft is making their games as accessible as possible. Y yeah. You know, I was, I made that video about how I like the steam deck now all of a sudden. Yeah. And I've been thinking about it. And, uh, a lot of the reason why I like it all of a sudden is because like I have my steam account on my PC. I have it on my Mac and I have it on my steam deck. So I can play it on my PC. I can play it on my Steam Deck. It's kind of like I have a Switch. Like I have, yeah. I can play it docked or I can remove it and play it wherever I want. In this case, I can play it on my computer or I can play it on the Steam Deck. Nintendo's next console doesn't need to be a Switch. It doesn't need to change between docked and undocked. It just mm -hmm. needs to have a good account system. To be yeah. able to play the game wherever you want. That's where all yeah. this technology is moving towards. Microsoft understands that. Steam understands that. Nintendo does not understand that. No, no. And, you know, it, Nintendo has a history of every console is dramatically different from the last. And I don't think there's room in this world for that kind of mentality anymore. No, you know, I have the up. same I have the same Twitter app on my phone that I've had since I first got my phone in 2010. So for Nintendo to not be able to use that same kind of mindset is is disheartening. Yeah, they, they really need to uh, shape up and make it easier for us yeah. to play their fucking games. <laughs> I know. Um. Anyway, let's talk shit about Microsoft now. Yes. Speaking of not being able to play your games, Xbox's online DRM under fire as uh, some users left unable to play games for four days. Uh-oh. Uh Oopsies. Yeah. On, on Friday, May 6th, Xbox support team first confirmed that its servers were experiencing major outages after users complained that they were unable to purchase or launch games or start cloud gaming sessions. On Saturday, support team claimed it had resolved the issue, only for it to uh, state several hours later that the issue has returned. In total, the support team claimed it, uh, to have fixed the problem twice this weekend, only for it to seemingly return later. Uh, update, Microsoft has said it expects to fully resolve the recent Xbox server outages with a new update in the coming days. Oh, no. Uh, oh, original story continues. Most recently, X Xbox stated at 1.21 a.m. British Standard Time on Monday, uh, that was 8.21 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, that European users should no longer be encountering errors uh, when attempting to launch games and start cloud gaming sessions. However, at the time of publishing this story, the replies are full of users claiming that they still can't boot their purchased games. Unsurprisingly, Xbox's online DRM policy has been heavily criticized by users, frustrated that when let uh, frustrated that they've been left unable to play games they purchased for the, for a fourth day. According to the website Does It Play, a Twitter account dedicated to testimonial, uh, sorry, dedicated to testing commercial releases to ensure they work entirely internet free, the majority of Xbox games require an online check before they'll boot. They absolutely do not have them on PlayStation or Switch, the account wrote. Trust us, 
uh, we've tested them. Uh, they added, if a PlayStation server goes down tomorrow permanently, every single, every single player game you own will work offline almost permanently, provided console is working and the account is linked. Uh, there are a tiny subset of titles that will not. Uh, and then you see some tweets, uh, people responding to the tweet from Xbox support saying that, nah, shit's still fucked up. Uh, <laughs> what are the games that don't work? Uh, it sounds like it's a lot of them. They claim it's only a small subset of games that wouldn't work offline. No, on P on PlayStation and Switch. Oh, Yeah. The majority so, of Xbox games require an online check before they'll boot. Uh, I, I'll note that uh, I'll shit on Switch a little bit. If you have two Switches, one of them needs to be on the internet at all times. Right, right. <laughs> um, I will say uh, 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 Xbox, remember, when it started the last console generation, mm -hmm. it was a feature that... Yes. You always needed to be online in order to play the games. Yeah. Uh, the outages are potentially embarrassing for Xbox, which has historically promoted the importance of game preservation almost significantly with its extensive backwards compatibility program. The company also famously U-turned on a hugely unpopular plan to require an online connection for Xbox One. Paris Lilly, a journalist and previous host of an official official Xbox event also criticized Xbox's DRM policy in the wake of this weekend's server outages. Uh, he said the Xbox outages have made it clear that something needs to change with their DRM policy. Games that are downloaded to my console should have a window to be offline and playable without checking in. Hopefully we get some clarity and a solution to avoid this issue again. Uh... Yeah, I the, down, the downtime, again, highlights the issue of preservation in the games industry and the challenges developers face keeping with their games playable in the future should crucial services like Xbox Live ever disappear. I, I need to know which games were the problem. Uh, like specifically. I mean, I mean obviously like Game was... Pass was down completely. Like, if you had Game Pass and you were playing games through Game Pass, it couldn't check to see if you had Game Pass because it was down. Right. You know, which is a problem because, I mean, game we talk so highly about Game Pass, but you need internet to play Game Pass. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one flaw. Uh, but that's just, that's just these days with account systems. Like, you can't watch a movie yeah. if you don't own it. Yeah. But he, well, no, because even still, if you own the movie... And you have it downloaded, you can watch the movie. Yeah, that's why I'm asking what specific games were the problem. Because because with Game Pass, it makes sense. Because like if you have Netflix, you can't watch the movie, you know? Because right. you're paying for a subscription. But if you own the movie, you should be able to do it. So what games can you own that are going to have a problem? Is what I want to know. Well, I'm watching... I watched one of the, one of the responses to... Uh, xbox support and they were trying to launch cyberpunk which oh. all right maybe that's a bad example maybe that's a bad example but that's not on game pass and that's a single player only game I thought it was with on game little pass. to no with little to no online uh connectivity uh yeah i don't think it's on game pass yeah so that's the that's the bigger issue here you know, I think regardless of what game or what what game is or isn't affected by this, the fact that a majority of games on Xbox must be connected to the internet in order to work, right. whether they require internet or not for regular gameplay, that's the problem. If it if it doesn't, if, yeah. Uh, Circa in the chat says, "I assume it's all games. If it's all games." <laughs> That's a major problem. Yeah. All digitally purchased games? That's still a major problem. That's still a major problem. And like Especially uh, what about well not even physically purchased games? That's a problem too cuz you still have to download those games anyway. Right. 
Yeah, because you know? like most of the time, whatever's on the disc isn't really what you need to play the game. Yeah. I mean, sometimes these days the disc co- that you get, you buy the thing and there's a code in it. It's not even a freaking yeah. disc in there. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the, the big story here. The fact that, you know, we have, you know, good old uncle Microsoft who's been touting <laughs> game preservation and doing all these really good uh, things and features for Xbox gamers like backwards compatibility, um, smart delivery, uh, free cloud saving, regardless of whether or not you have Xbox Live, uh, Game Pass being as good as it is. Um, what's that? Quick resume that everybody seems to love. Yeah, you know all these little things that like make Xbox sound like a much more enjoyable system than PlayStation or even Switch. And now the one thing it's designed to do, which is play games, you can't do if you have an internet connection. If you don't have an internet connection, uh, Supra Star. DC says, I heard Elden Ring on Xbox was also affected by this. That's a major that, problem. That's yeah. a major problem. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> TechLink says, the games are preserved in their servers. You can only access them via a paid account. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, did they, they said they fixed this? Uh, I think they fixed it. I think it's been fixed. But did they fix it so that you can play games offline? Because <laughs> that's what needs to be fixed. <laughs> no, I think they just fixed it to the way it was. They just fixed their servers. Okay, well, that's still yeah. a problem. And that they're going to implement a, a new fix so that this doesn't happen again. Uh, I hope that fix is making it so you can play games offline. Yeah. Uh, that might have to be a game-by-game game thing, though. It might. Well, I mean, it seems like it's... I mean, because, you know, Elden Ring on... PlayStation doesn't do this, so it it it, it, right. it it sounds like it's a system thing, right? Or, or it's a problem with their digital storefront. Anyway, Fern Gods, thanks for the prime. Khalil Jama, thanks for seventeen months. Keep up the great work, thanks, dude. And Nico Moso, thank you for the eight months. Uh, anyway, uh, let's now talk about the World Video Game Hall of Fame inductees world for 2020 yeah the world's video game hall of fame has announced uh their inductees for the class of 2022 uh it's official miss pac-man gobbled up the competition dance dance <laughs> revolution hit the beat Le- legend of zelda ocarina of time completed the adventure and sid meyer civilization made history these four iconic games which have influenced popular culture in the video game industry today join the world of video game hall of fame at the strong museum of play they emerged from a field of finalists that also included Assassin's Creed, Candy Crush, Minesweeper, NBA Jam, Parappa the Rappa, Resident Evil, Rogue, and Words with Friends. Oh, I, I was I was impressed for a minute. I thought you were making that. I thought you were coming up with all that. <laughs> I was like, oh, damn, he's I'm not that good. I'm not that good. So, yeah, we, the, we, uh, the, we don't need to strong- read all this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to summarize the strong, the strong National Museum of Play in uh, Rochester, New York. Every year they induct uh, select video games into their video game Hall of Fame. And this year they've inducted Ms. Pac-Man, DDR, Ocarina of Time, and Sid Meier's Civilization. Uh, I think these are all deserving. Uh, yes. Assassin's Creed, that's an inch. So Assassin's Creed was one of the finalists and didn't make it. Uh, Correct. I think that's an interesting one. I could see why it wouldn't make it over these other ones. Uh, Candy Crush, I kind of think deserves a spot in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Also, Words with Friends. I, I see that's that's one game I don't out of all these games that probably like deserves it the least because that was more of a fad than a than a game, you know? Like it didn't really I have any lasting impact compared to the rest of these games. I think it did. I mean, but okay, so it's basically just Scrabble just online. So like, mm-hmm. yeah. But I think it I I it it was a fad, but it was like Pokemon Go levels of huge, you know? True, true. I even played it and I can't spell. 
What is Rogue? That's the game that started the rogue like genre. Oh. <laughs> That's why it's called Rogue Like, because it's a game like Rogue. I did not know that. Yeah. I I didn't know there was an original rogue. Why do you think it was called Rogue Like? <laughs> I thought people were just stupid. <laughs> people was being dumb. I don't know. Uh um why is it called Metroidvania? <laughs> why is it called Souls like? Um Minesweeper also? Come on. Come on, Minesweeper. That nah, come on. That should be there. Yeah. I but mean I, NBA Jam. Come on. The the ones that made it Miss Pac-Man, Dance Dance Revolution, Sid Meier's Civilization, and, and Ocarina of Time. I think those all yeah. make sense. Was Pac-Man already in it? I believe so. Because I don't know if Ms. Pac-Man... Like, I mean, how much does Ms. Pac-Man deserve it if Pac-Man was already there? Yeah. Well, Ms. Pac-Man... For a lot of people... To a lot of people, Ms. Pac-Man is a substantially different game. Also, the story of Ms. Pac-Man, I think, is an important story in the annals of video game history. I have to be honest with you. I've yeah. only spent a lot of time with Ms. Pac-Man. So what is the difference between regular Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man besides the bow? Uh, the mazes. The maze, like Pac-Man only has one maze. Ms. Pac-Man oh. has several mazes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I think, honestly, Ms. Pac-Man deserves to be in the Hall of Fame over regular Pac-Man. That's what I think. It's It's definitely a... I think it was a more culturally one, significant game. It's definitely a Sonic 1, Sonic 2 situation. We're mm -hmm. like, yeah, Sonic 1's a good game, and I guess you can argue that like it's culturally important, but like Sonic 2 is just so much fucking better. <laughs> um So yeah, I guess this doesn't say if if regular Pac-Man was in the Hall of Fame already. It is. It is. Oh, it is. Okay. Uh if you if you go like through the company's website, you can look at all the inductees and Regular Pac-Man is in uh, World of Warcraft, the original John Madden football, Final Fantasy VII, Tetris, Super Mario Brothers, Sonic the Hedgehog, Space Invaders, Grand Theft Auto Three, Carmen San Diego, Halo One, Pokemon Red and Green, the original Japanese versions. We usually uh, uh, go over every year when they when they induct uh, new games in there. Yeah, because, I mean, I don't know, like, I don't know how much weight you put behind the Strong Museum of Play, but if there is going to be a video game Hall of Fame, like, it's good to see, like, what is considered Hall of Fame worthy, because these are, you know, when we're all dead and the aliens come and they look at our culture, <laughs> they're going to see these games as uh, representative of what we as a society think are the best games. Yes. So uh, I I feel like people are expecting me to say something about Ocarina of Time being here. <laughs> <laughs> I think it deserves it. I think Ocarina of Time uh, was, especially at the time, one of the best N64 games and a very culturally significant game and definitely changed the way games were developed after the fact. Yes. Uh, I do not recommend going back and playing Ocarina of Time. <laughs> it will not be. A fun time <laughs> yeah um but yeah all these other yeah dance dance revolution sid Meier's civilization they're all they're all very culturally significant games and yes. have had uh the flourishing franchises out of them mm -hmm. uh anyway uh what else do we like have a, a real quick uh before we move on i think zelda is the only franchise with two entries in the Hall of Fame. Ocarina of Time and the original game. Pac-Man. Oh yeah, Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. Never mind. So those are the only <laughs> two with multiple entries in the Street Fighter 2 is in is in here. Does did they, yes. they just we don't yeah, nobody cares about Street Fighter nobody 1. Nobody gives a shit about Street Fighter 1. <laughs> Yeah, I think so, yeah, those are the only two that have uh yeah. two inductees in the franchise. Yeah. Anyway, uh what else? 
Uh, what else? Uh, AEW, uh, their mysterious video game now has a title and footage revealed. Uh, all Elite Wrestling game in development at Ukes Media is officially called AEW Fight Forever. The game's official Twitter account revealed the title below alongside two development update videos giving fans a first look at Nyla Rose and Long Island's own Chris Statlander. Uh, while the videos made clear the gameplay is still in development and therefore not final, it gives what appears to be a fairly complete look at how AEW Fight Forever will play. The Nyla Rose clip gives a close-up look at the native beast in-game model before sl before showing gameplay from the ring as she wrestles chris statlander whose video shows the reverse but with a few more special moves uh shown off details are still slim on aew fight forever overall with ukes going relatively quiet since announcing the game and multiple sequels uh in november 2020 aew vice president and man i've met twice at e3 kenny omega said last <laughs> february in a perfect world, the game would be released in about a year's time, though a year has obviously come and gone without further estimations on release date. When it does arrive, AEW Fight Forever promises a full campaign mode plus multiplayer, creator wrestler, and various other unusual modes. While a roster has not been confirmed, Omega has previously said it will reflect the continuous growing number of wrestlers signed to the real AEW. So the the big deal about this game from the gameplay footage that everybody I think is excited about is that this is taking a more arcadey approach to a pro wrestling game uh, along the lines of the old N64 games like WrestleMania 2000 and No Mercy to the point that Kenny Omega actually tracked down and hired the director of No Mercy to work on this game. Wow. And I think that is exciting. A anything AEW does that excites wrestling fans, but I think this is exciting p fans of wrestling video games because for too, too damn long, we've had WWE's wrestling simulator games. Which yeah, those I don't are, think are not, that's a, it's not a good fit for like, that's a really bad approach. Yeah. 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 Cause if you want, if you want a fake sport to feel <laughs> real, simulating it is not the way to go. Yeah, you want let's to keep that fantasy of the fact that it's you want to keep the fantasy of it being real. Let's make a simulation on doing a fake sport. <laughs> that's just a recipe for a bad game. Yeah. And that's how I always felt with wrestling games. It's like yeah. it's just frustrating like 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 doing a move that is like not a re like like yeah. it's not like it should feel like you're actually fighting. Like, like it should yeah. feel like there's a fight happening. And wrestling games usually yeah. feel like there's like a stamina bar, and like you get like winded out of like one punch. Like it's a, like well, it's... like the stamina bar, like that that makes sense because like you have to do something to differentiate it from like a traditional fighting game. I'm more talking about like the moment to moment gameplay, like executing moves, having somebody run against the ropes, uh, grappling getting a chair to hit somebody with it's all very technical and for something that's supposed to be like fun and power fantasy ish like wrestling you don't want it to be technical you just want it to work and have it happen see i want it to be more like a fighting game right i want it to be like here's the move do the move <laughs> right press the button the move happens <laughs> well yeah you can do that and still have it so that you have to pin the person at the end Right. Uh, or make them submit. And I think, you know, taking an arcadey approach, you can take an arcadey approach and still have a pin or submission mechanic. Right. I, Whereas I the WWE games, like, they're very slow, you know, methodical. And they look like they've been getting worse and worse. The yes. WWE Apparently, games. this year's was better, but I don't know. I didn't play it. <laughs> Supposedly, people, wrestling fans like AEW more than, than WWE, right? That's oh, God. Thing. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, yeah. So that's why it's a big deal. AEW is making a game, and they freaking uh, are using the guy who made the best wrestling game of all time. And not only that, they're financing it themselves. They're not going to like THQ or well, THQ. Oh yeah, THQ or like EA or anything. I was gonna like, say, wasn't it rumored THQ themselves. was doing it? No. Uh. Well, they got the guy who worked on No Mercy worked for THQ. Ah. Okay. When they, when No Mercy came out. And Ukes developed a whole bunch of wrestling games for THQ. So it's within that lineage. 
Okay. But yeah, this is all financed by AEW. It's not going through anyone else. Very interesting. I'm surprised they have that much money because making a video game is very expensive. But I assume well, the, it would make them a lot of money too. I think it, I think it helps that uh, Tony Khan, who owns AEW, has more money than Vince McMahon, <laughs> so he can just <laughs> all right use money. He can just throw money at whatever. Um, yeah, I I also saw someone said it in the chat. It, I didn't really. I it's not really much to talk about because there's no reveal. But uh, apparently, the WWE is working on a action RPG game. That's actually so, kind like, of cool. That's, that's I, cool. yeah. <laughs> but like, I didn't put it in the keep because like there's nothing to reveal us that they just said they're working on it. I wonder if it's in response to this because everything they do now is in response to AEW, or if this is a genuine attempt to like do something new in the video game space. Have you heard of WrestleQuest? Yes, yes, I have. That's that was at PAX. Um, I didn't try it because it's an RPG. Uh, about wrestling, <laughs> but Macho Man's in it. Really? Yeah, Macho Man's in it. Andre the Giant, Jake the Snake, Roberts. Oh wow! I'm curious how or why <laughs> Macho Man's in it because he is a notoriously not alive. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, neither is Andre the Giant. Or the Road Warriors, for that matter, who also appear to be in the game. So they probably had to go to their estates and ask Wait, for permission. It's kind of weird. That's weird. It's weird for an indie game to to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get the estates of people to be involved. That's weird. Yeah. But okay. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Works for them. The chat says, because Macho Man is the cream of the crop, oh, rises yeah. to the top. <laughs> anyway it's true uh anyway let's uh let's thank scott the sloth for 200 bits what do you guys think about the squeenix selling off all of their western studios we talked about it last week didn't we did talk about it last week uh it's weird and bizarre um it proves two things one square had no idea what to do with those studios and two they are putting too much stock in the nft future because <laughs> they basically admitted that they sold those franchises and studios to fund their nft scam i saw somewhere someone was saying that they're going to get bought by sony and i kind of i kind of think that that's seems like that's what's happening it's plausible i don't want to say that that is what's going to happen but i i would not be surprised if it does happen right i'm also why would they sell that off before selling? I'm confused by that. Would that be so, more well, worth it? Yes, because sometimes what, what uh, people will do, what companies will do to prepare for a sale is they'll divest themselves from like other, you know, they'll basically sell off parts of their company or like lay off a bunch of people to try and make their quarterly earnings and profits look better by comparison. Okay. So if they if they get rid of like their Western studios, they no longer have their Western studios on their balance sheet. Their balance sheet looks uh, so much better now because so, because they say that their Western studios do badly when they really don't. But yes. but but Square says like, look, these games are selling so bad, so now they don't have to have it on their balance sheet. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, also too, like slimming down a. You know, a slim down company might look better for someone to buy, so this way they can integrate it better into the the bigger company. I'm sure Sony does not care about the Western stuff. No, I mean, I mean Tomb Raider maybe, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, if Sony owned Final Fantasy and uh, Dragon Quest, that's a big coup. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anyway, you can now buy the gold plated Wii original. Uh, originally made for the queen yes you have the chance to own a truly one-of-a-kind nintendo wii provided you have a well-stuffed bank account to match kataka reports that dutch collector uh and console variations owner don is auctioning an infamous 24 karat gold-plated wii bankrupt game developer thq intended to deliver to the queen queen elizabeth ii in 2009 the system was meant as a promo piece for the forgettable minigame collection Big Family Games, but never made it to Buckingham Palace. 
due to an understandably strict royal gift policy. It returned to THQ and popped up in a twenty seven popped up in twenty seventeen after a collector obtained it from the studio contact uh, from a studio contact. Uh, the unnamed owner eventually sold it to Don. Don first tried to sell the Golden Wii on eBay in October of 2021 uh, with an asking price of $300,000. The marketplace shut him down, however, as a policy change flagged accounts that sold items at prices far outside their usual range. The new auction is at Golden, which doesn't have similar restrictions. Uh, you'll want to brace yourself if you are considering a purchase. Bidding has already reached $2,000 at the time of writing, and we expect it to climb much higher, if not necessarily $300,000, by the time the auction closes on May 21st. Uh, it also isn't mint condition, uh, as there are signs of, scra of scattered gold chipping, and, even and given that Nintendo shut down online multiplayer and Wii Shop service years ago, you probably uh, won't do more with this machine than stare at it lovingly through a glass case. Nonetheless, it won't be surprising if someone snaps if someone snaps up this Wii. Unlike many special edition consoles, this is a genuinely unique device with a story behind it. And like Nintendo World Championship cartridges or similar rarities, it's as much of a snapshot of a moment in gaming history as anything else. The 24 karat gold Wii has a was a product of an era when audacious public publicity stunts were still relatively commonplace in the games industry, and the new owner will likely remember that period for a long time to come. I think I think we could scrounge up a hundred grand. Uh, Guys in chat, come on. Well, <laughs> I had been meaning to start that only fans. So there we go. Everyone ask your mothers for for a thousand bucks. <laughs> We're getting the Queen's we. <laughs> I should, I should just say real quick, this article says that, like, online multiplayer and Wii Shop services shut down years ago, uh, so so you probably can't do more with, with this machine than look at it. No, if you own physical Wii discs, you can still play it. Yeah, they didn't really have updates back then. It was yeah. just, so, the game was the game. If you own the Wii, you can play your Wii games. It's not like today when Microsoft servers go down, you can't play Xbox. I want this. The current bid is 4500 which is honestly not bad. It's but reasonable. That's pretty reasonable. If if somebody, yeah. if, if, if I could verify that this was real and somebody came to me in a back alleyway and was like, do you want this for $4,500? I'd be like, fuck yeah, I want that. <laughs> Give me that. But I, I know this is going to go up like crazy. I remember seeing a video on uh, the Queen's Wii. Like, years ago like the guy actually went to don's house and like looked at it uh through the display case and yeah it's it's 24 karat gold it's heavy it's real gold that's a lot of money to put on a weed to send to somebody who's not gonna accept it <laughs> <laughs> i would like to plug it in and play it yeah like, of course, I want it in a glass case afterwards, but I do want to plug it in and try it. I think it needs to be tried. <laughs> yeah. I need to try the $300,000 Wii. <laughs> maybe I'll play uh whatever that stupid game is. Uh, Maybe I'll try Big oh, Family Big Games. Family Adventure? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of have to. It's why it was made. Yeah. Anyway, uh, less news. Uh, nice Gotham news. Knights. We got a we got a trailer for Gotham Knights. Will, what do you think of the trailer? I saw it and I was like, "This is another Arkham game." I don't know how I feel. Uh, it is very similar to Arkham. Um, I feel like it's it. I feel like it is going to be different enough to be unique because I mean, it showed off two characters to show Nightwing and Red Hood. Nightwing played very much like an Arkham game, but Red Hood. Because he uses guns, it was very much more range focused, and I think that kind of changes the way you play a game like this. Red Hood looks you know sick I mean? in this picture. Yeah, um, but also like yeah, so he uses non lethal bullets, and and uh, it didn't look great. <laughs> it looked like his combat. I, I, I was like, 
just punch him. I don't know. I, I have know. a I have a problem with Red Hood in general mm-hmm. being a part of the Batman family when he should clearly not fucking be a part of the Batman family. Yeah. He should be like dead. the lost, forgot, dead, preferably, <laughs> or the lost, forgotten son who Batman keeps trying to reconnect with but can't mm-hmm. because he's just too lost in the darkness. If Dick Grayson and Tim Drake are the example of Robin's uh, working, then Jason Todd should be the example of Robin failing. Yeah. And no, let's put the bat symbol on him and let's not have him use guns anymore. Let's have him use a crowbar. You know, the thing that killed him. (laughs) Anyway. uh, So wait, hold on. Before we get into it, this is, this is, uh, after the Arkham series, right? This is the next no, game, or is no, this no, not no, no, okay? No. Okay, because I was gonna universe. say, because you know, the Red Hood was a little different in the Arkham series. <laughs> yes, things yes. went a little different than they did in 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 the comics. Yeah, no, the, the trailer specifically references the fact that Jason Todd died, died, and when he came back, he gained the ability to do quadruple jumps. Oh. That's crazy. They're showing like, off like like the Mario movie. <laughs> yes, they're showing off like traversal mechanics. Like Nightwing has this thing called the front, the flying trapeze, which is basically just a glider. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And Red Hood's equivalent is he can just jump in space, like just do quadruple jumps. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. I I feel like you know, Ark the Arkham games tried to be very serious. This looks like it's going to be a lot more, not necessarily tongue in cheek, but like have more fun and be more arcadey than the Arkham series was. Mm-hmm. So, but it looks like this is a similar like, combat. Yeah. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It does look like the uh, vehicle sections are going to be integrated better than they were in Arkham Knight. Like, you're not going to have to do Batmobile platforming. Uh, but there's still vehicle sections? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's an open world, so it makes sense that you would have a vehicle. Okay. So. But, all that said, I'm probably not going to get to play it because Gotham Knights is no longer coming to PS4 and Xbox One. The post-Batman game is now a PS5, Series X, uh, and PC only. Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment's back Batman Arkham Series successor Gotham Knights is coming to PS5, PC, and Xbox Series X this October, and only those platforms. The game is no longer slated for next gen. Uh, sorry, no longer slated for release on last generation consoles, PS4 and Xbox One. Warner Brothers announced today, and a new release, and a new, and a news release announcing a new gameplay trailer for Arkham uh, for Gotham Knights. Warner Brothers said to provide players with the best possible gameplay experiences, the game will release on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC, and and will not be available for PlayStation 4 or Xbox One consoles. When WB and developer WB Montreal... WB Games Montreal announced Gotham Knights back in October 2020. It was a cross-generation game, but it appears the ongoing delayed development of the cooperative action adventure has shifted to current-gen platforms only. Gotham Knights is stated for release in October of this year, October 25th, after being delayed out from 2021. Last year, the open-world action game is set in Gotham City, which no longer has its famous protector, Batman. In the game, Bruce Wayne has supposedly perished in a massive explosion, and in a message to his surviving compatriots, Robin, Nightwing, uh, Red Hood, and Batgirl, he tells them how to carry on in his absence. The game's antagonists will be the Court of Owls, a generations-long secret society made up of Gotham's wealthiest families. That giant glider yeah. just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what I mean by it. it's looking to be more like arcadey. Yeah. And like, you know, just have fun with it rather than, you know, no, this is really this is really what Batman would do sort of thing. Red Hood, I watch him fall what looks like 10, 15 stories, and he just lands on a guy, and he's fine. And I'm like, that's right. Batman had a cape yeah, to like stop himself from fall damage. Red Hood doesn't have anything. <laughs> Later in this trailer, you see something like Nightwing falls from a similar height, but then he mm-hmm. pulls out his grappling hook to like at the last minute to like control his descent. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm down for that. I mean, he yeah. also has a glider, so that makes yes. sense. But Red Hood doesn't make any sense. So he's, he's going to no, shoot the ground, the, like like just the dude well. in a leather jacket. Yeah. Uh, there's also like a like a part where Red Hood is yeah he's shooting like a big bad guy. It just yeah. looks like it looks like like what's the challenge there? He's just shooting. He's just he's just like machine gunning the bad guy from I far know. away. That like defeats the whole purpose of the Arkham combat. Well, I I understand like you know obviously Red Hood would would have a different combat style than all the other characters, and like visually like i get like i get it i get what they're going for and i can even see like in terms of gameplay mechanics like that would have to play differently Mm -hmm. i just don't know if it's going to be as fun as simply beating somebody up with your fists you know whenever i see like the bat family and i see red hood in it batman's usually nowhere to be seen (laughs) so i guess it kind of makes sense i mean i I mean, I read more Batman comics than you do. It's like I, I see right. him pop up here and there, and it's like, always does he just talk like, to Batman? I've never, like, yes, I never see him yes. actually talk to Batman. Yeah, he talks to Batman. Like they have a relationship, and like, but uh, he mostly goes off and does his own thing, right? And Batman just gives him space. I feel like that relationship should just not exist anymore. No, you're right. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. Um. Okay. I, I, I don't. Will... What? I will say I did buy uh the McFarlane uh Robin from the game because I want a Tim Drake action figure and this is currently the only one McFarlane sells right now. It's his eyes. He's looking that way. So like he has no neutral pose. He always has to be like turning his head a certain way in order to, like to look straight at you. And I don't understand why. Uh, well, I know why Todd decided to make figures like that, but it's Our a buddy, bad, bad idea, and I think he's I think he's reverting back. Yeah, Todd, Todd McFarlane, the Todd father, <laughs> who I always I've been at several conventions where I stand next to him. Yeah, we were. He's in we the were, middle of like talk. We he's could in the smell of talking him. to somebody. Yeah, he s- smells like comic books. Mm-hmm. So, just like you, <laughs> just like me, that we we could be best friends. Um. Yeah. So I was looking forward to this game and I was going to get it. Not like I have any time to play video games like this anymore, but now I got to get a whole new system to play it. And that is really annoying. I wasn't going to play it probably. Uh, what about uh game pass? Is it going to be on game pass? Uh, no, at That'd least not at, cool. not at the moment. Cause then you could stream it. Yes. Um, that's all the news that we have. Yes. Can you believe it? Oh my god! I don't. I don't uh, have a tweet of the week. I. 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 Uh, I flubbed it. You're. You're too heartbroken over the death of the iPod. You know what? Don't worry, Will. I got a tweet of the week. I got it. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. This is literally the last thing that I liked on Twitter. Stardew Valley, and it's just a little tiny dog with a little tiny hat, and he's got a little tiny hoe, and he's got his little paw on it, like he's been farming. Oh, that's and that's and that's the tweet of the week, everybody. That is funny. It's by Jelly Toast Bun. Very good. I I like it. Very good tweet of the week. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll talk to you people briefly. Yes, starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, boop, beep. We got a uh, doorknob who says, I'll watch you guys even if you go to OnlyFans. How many times have we mentioned OnlyFans? Uh, How many times are we threatening our audience with the OnlyFans? <laughs> I mean, I, th- I threaten it quite a bit in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I mean, Robert Taylor says again. I must say, put some respect on Viva Pinata Party Animals. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we say Viva? Wait, was P- Pinata was Party Animals the bad one, or was that the good one? I, I don't know. I don't remember. There, there, are, there are a surprising number of Viva Pinata games, and by surprising number, I mean more than two. The one that was on Game Pass was the shitty one, right? But there are good Viva Pinata games. Apparently, yeah. I've never tried them. 
Um, Seven says, it doesn't matter where you guys go. As long as there is a podcast somewhere, I'll find it and support you. That's right. I forgot last week was about uh, Twitch. Twitch. And now uh, they're kind of pushing creators away. Yes. Um, Thank you, Seven. Uh, Yeah. I mean, we're we're down to go anywhere. We don't care. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Only fans. (laughs) If, hey, if they had a podcast thing, sure. I okay. Well, hold on. <laughs> I don't think there's anything preventing us from doing from like doing long form content on OnlyFans. They, they would need to have it. like a podcast, like like a like a like initiative. You know, if they were like, "Hey, we're looking to get new podcasts on our platform. Do you want to be on the platform?" We'd be like, "Okay." I guess, but at the same time, that was kind of because, def- because like you're saying, like, like have something like Anchor, where like you can upload a podcast and they distribute it to other platforms. Sure, that kind of defeats the purpose of OnlyFans because you're only making content for the fans who give you money. Well, the, well, well, the whole idea of OnlyFans is to be Patreon, but also okay with with uh, with the risque stuff, right? Because Patreon was. People use Patreon for podcasts and YouTube channels and whatever, but people also yeah. used it for like lewds and 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 cosplaying and stuff. And right. Patreon notoriously uh, uh uh like like treated those people very badly. They they basically blacklisted them from from search in Patreon. You could only get to to their pages through external links and stuff. Right. Um. Uh. And and OnlyFans changed that. OnlyFans is trying to get more mainstream, and they're trying to get it's, if they w- they could take on Patreon if they wanted to, and they yeah. could be like, "Hey, we need more podcasters." Wolf Den, you want to be on it? Not maybe yeah. not as a distribution site, but maybe as like uh, you know, Spotify as Joe Rogan. Maybe you could be yes. like, "Watch it here first on OnlyFans if you give them five dollars a month." True. And then you guys who all already have an OnlyFans account, all of you that are here, you could yeah, just yeah, every single would, one of you, you could just watch us, you know, where you would normally watch content, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ice Cold Hell says playing Resident Evil Four, first Resident Evil game ever, have four to six. Do they run on Switch well, and which ones are worth checking out? Uh, so I can tell you for a fact that four runs well on the Switch. And just uh, stop right I, there. Well, yes. Uh, if you're curious, I don't know about six, but five, I played that at E3 many moons ago, and that was just a demo unit, and that ran very well. So I would imagine that they all run fine on the Switch. Uh, the problem is, if you want more Resident Evil games, I, Switch has a lot of Resident Evil games. It had like the original Resident Evil Zero, uh, Revelations 1 and 2, uh, 4, 5, and 6, like you said. But the best ones are on PlayStation and Xbox. The Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 7. Yeah, so, so I liked 5 when it came out because it was just like 4, but like mm-hmm. more of it. It's not as good as 4. No. Um, and 6, I heard, is very bad. I only saw a little bit of it, and it looked pretty bad. Um. Yeah, unfortunately, I would stop at four. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, you can try out two and 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 three seven. and and seven. Uh, yeah. they're not streaming on Switch. Seven is streaming in Japan. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, oh wait, we're not done here. Uh, What's we that? Have, your Japanese Switch account. We have Dizzy Delta, who says every podcast I listen to slash watch is 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 love on YouTube live on YouTube. Yours is the only one on Twitch. Move over already so I don't have to use shifty Twitch and watch six minutes of ads every 10 minutes. It really does suck. Yeah. I'm also looking at my OBS window. I look fucking fantastic right now. And then I look over at Twitch and it looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> so when this uploads to YouTube, you'll see how great my camera looks. And then uh, you see it on Twitch and it's, it's not that great. Especially when it's tiny. When it's this big, it looks it looks very bad. I don't know what it is like in Discord. I look fine, but on Twitch, like on the on the live feed, I'm like white as hell. Like I'm blown out from the light. They, they, uh, I mean, you are pretty blown out from light, but yeah. Twitch 
crushes the colors. So, so yeah. uh, it's super compressed. The bit rate is horrible. Um, but you can... They also do something weird. Like, uh, I'll see sometimes it, it looks like it glitches and the blacks get super black and the whites get super white. So yeah. um, the contrast gets all... They try to, like, overcompensate the contrast. Like, like if, if you if you put like 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 a natural color or like a log or something through twitch twitch will try to fix it it's very weird yeah um so yeah because like i can see in discord and like yeah i'm i'm like white but i'm like acceptable this one i, I <laughs> on twitch i look like fucking casper right so uh what camera are you using uh my m100 didn't you get the r yeah, but I want I want to use that for like filming and stuff. Oh, okay. I'm eventually gonna get like a better camera, but you don't want to get it. You don't want to just use the R. No, I don't want to just use the R. It's freaking great. I I know it is, but I want <laughs> like I want to use that as like a camera camera, and I want to get like a like a better camera dedicated for streaming. Okay. So. Uh, anyway, Willow, 19 months. So I won't have to do this anymore soon. What are you talking about? Oh, if I move, oh, if we move to a different yeah. platform. <laughs> no, still give me your money. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I want to bring this up because I want to invite this type of energy. But last night at like three in the morning, I got a Venmo notification for $5 from a random person that said prime subscription. <laughs> oh, no. One of you assholes just Venmoed me your Twitch sub. Don't do that. Do not do that. I mean, thanks, but probably just don't do that. <laughs> it was very weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're in the chat now. Yes. Uh... I mean, I guess that stops Twitch from getting 50%, but damn. I mean, yeah, it's true. Also, yeah. it's not a prime sub. It's just your money. That's just a sub sub. <laughs> How did you get your Venmo? It's literally just my name. It's it's very easy to find. Um, But don't. <laughs> but don't. Yeah, I don't want that. Uh, Back from the Gordon Lightfoot concert, it was awesome. What? Who is that? I've heard of Gordon Lightfoot. I can't tell you a single song he's played. Oh. That's an old man. <laughs> That's my future right there. Yep. Oh, no. That's scary. <laughs> uh, what, is, what has he done? Country uh, music. Okay, enough. Yeah, that's I'll I'll ask my father in law. For Lovin' Me, Early Morning Rain, Steel Rail Blues. Good for him. He's eighty three. Good head of hair. <laughs> uh is the Twitter account The Weeb Den really you, or is it just some guy pretending? It's literally Fred, the guy who pulls uh, yeah. the comments from the previous week's Wolf Den live. Oh, look at that. I got a Venmo notification. Kate McCat uh, oh. says, Every everyone go Venmo Bob and say it's for the OnlyFans sub. Jeffrey Sorensen liked my activity on Venmo. I don't like this. I don't like this, this, this public... Uh, you're you're gonna need uh you're gonna need to change your Venmo name. That's so annoying. Hey Will, do you think the Capcom Fighting Collection will get us more Darkstalker sequels? <laughs> and the uh, other game sequels as well. I thought they already had all the Darkstalkers games in it. There was one Capcom collection where they actually put all the Darkstalkers games in there, and I don't remember which one because there's like a hundred Capcom fighting game collections out there. So it's hard to keep track. Uh, see any good names on Switch Sports? Just changed my title to Pro Produce Child. <laughs> <laughs> and name to With Yo Mama. 
Uh, I see some very creative ways to get through the uh, profanity filters. Oh, yeah. um, uh, my my tag is just thanks. I think it's just thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I I yeah, I have, I I I don't know. Um, nothing I could say on this podcast, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I changed mine to Graham Graham because I kept hurting my arm in badminton. <laughs> <laughs> Can you all imagine if Wada Games got a hold of that gold weed? That would be horrible. That would be that would be awful. I mean, it's that would be on, very bad. It's being auctioned, and they said that the first one got thrown out. Why? Why did the first auction get thrown out? Because it was on eBay, and eBay has like uh, a policy where. Like, like, I guess you can't like it flags items that are selling for higher than what they should be selling. So they probably thought it was just a regular ass Wii and regular ass Wii's don't sell for $300,000. Right. Well, that's that's unfortunate. Yeah, I was going to say maybe it didn't sell because friggin uh, nobody could launder money through it. <laughs> yeah. Um, This is on golden dot co is the website that's doing the auction. I yeah. don't think I've ever heard of them. I hope it's a good site. And they're not laundering money. Yeah. Uh, too many people did it. I think now it says it wants to know the last four of your number. <laughs> oh, to prove that it's me that you want to give money to? Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, everyone Venmo me so I could buy that that we. That's a good idea. <laughs> Bob one v one me on Street Fighter two. I am not good at Street Fighter two. No, um, Street Fighter is very hard. <laughs> did you see the guys selling the hat on eBay? No, I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. What hat? There is the Linus Tech Tips Gold Xbox controller. We have a gold I Xbox controller. No, he actually got uh, uh, somebody to make him a solid gold Xbox controller. Oh. Like, a made of actual gold. Interesting. Yeah. That, that was an interesting video, because he actually, like, showed how it was done. And he has to wear gloves when he plays it. Uh, also, Bob, did you get the beta for Overwatch 2? I didn't try... Uh, it just looks like Overwatch One. I'm very Is not that, interested at all. What's the deal with that game? Because like that, like the beta came out, and like everyone was like really upset by it. It is <laughs> so. It's Overwatch Two. It's a new okay. game. It's not Overwatch okay. One. It's Overwatch Two. All of the maps are the same. Okay, but they're but they're like if they were nighttime, they're daytime now. <laughs> all of the maps are the same. Uh -huh. There is one new character. Okay. And that's it. Wow. Uh <laughs> there's 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 like little things like McCree doesn't ha his, his name's not McCree anymore. Right. And he uh doesn't have flashbangs. There's like little tweaks like that, but for the most part it's the same fucking game. So this speaks to a lot of like the division between Activision and Blizzard, where Blizzard's uh strategy is just Make a game, make the best game possible, and support it for years, and then eventually make another game. Whereas Activision's policy is game every year until we run the series into the ground, and then you work on Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. So that's why Blizzard was forced to make uh, the Warcraft Three uh, remake that was bad, and Diablo Two remake, and Diablo Four, and the Diablo Mobile game, and now Overwatch Two. Even though they just want to fucking make the games they want to make and this harass been, women this should have been a big update yes it should have been a but big there's, there's no Overwatch money in update. big updates there's money in a new game yeah yeah but th but then make it different make uh, it's the same maps and characters yeah. <laughs> like they really didn't do anything different when i was watching people play it the freaking uh 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 like practice area is the same it's not even any different at all. The robots was everything right. was exactly the same. So I was like, what the fuck? Why would I play that? Very weird. 
Anyway, that's it. Thanks for hanging All out, right. everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on OnlyFans.com. I mean, twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. I appreciate you. Uh, I'll stream on Thursday. I don't know what. We've got a nice, cool video coming out on Thursday about this thing that I'll talk about on Thursday. It's a fun, happy little thing. Everybody oh loves boy. it. Everybody who's, I had a bunch of people try it. They all loved it. Right, guys? <laughs> I don't think any of them are here. Uh, who should you watch now? Uh, who's on? Who haven't we rated in a while? I did. I don't know. I good? just see the Anyone same. Anyone good? I read the same people all the time. Go watch Wood. I don't even care anymore. Uh, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Say hi to Wood. <laughs>